Welcome back to FT Markets. Greece has been tossed around in stormy seas, its future in the Eurozone uncertain. But when will the waves hit other shores? What's the threat of storms in Europe or even the US? With me to put Greece in a global financial market context is Stephanie Flanders, who's the Chief Market Strategist for Europe at JP Morgan Asset Management. Stephanie, welcome back to the Financial Times. Um, actually, the market reaction to Greece globally has been quite serene, quite calm, but you've noticed quite some interesting trends, uh, this transatlantic divergence, if we look at our um, first chart that you've brought along. Yes, if you, if you think about what you're looking at, it's the relative volatility of European equities compared to US equities. We've compared the, the US uh, VIX index, the Wall Street fear gauge, which is measure of right. implied volatility against the European equivalent. And, yeah, tell us and you can see, I mean, it's reached a 10-year high in the last uh, few weeks and indeed the, la the last few months in response to the Greek situation. And you can see, you know, compared to the past, I don't think this is telling you that it hasn't been volatile in European markets for the last few years because we know it has. But all past occasions, there was a feeling that there was a s systemic risk to the global financial system. People were worried about the whole of the Eurozone and that was probably why US equities were also being volatile at the same time. They moved together. Yeah. I mean, it's quite striking if you look back to 2012 when the Eurozone crisis was at its height. Um, the relative volatility was um, pretty much um, much lower. And that is when people felt that a problem in Eurozone was actually, and the problem in Greece was actually a global problem and certainly a problem for US investors. They don't feel that at the moment. And we've been commenting on that over the last few months. That there's course. remarkable, uh, you could say, complacency, but certainly a calm in the face of these last minute endless negotiations with Greece and the real prospect of a default. Do you think that US calm is justified? Well, I think a certain amount of calm from all investors is justified because our exposure to Greece is much less our direct exposure than it was in 2012. And there's also a feeling that the other countries who might have been, if you like, the dominoes who could fall if something even more serious happened to Greece, well, they've put themselves on a much better path in these last two or three years. Spain, Portugal, Italy, all, all not doing fantastically, but doing much better than they were. OK, but you like to put Greece in a sort of context of a, quite an important moment for financial markets with the Federal Reserve possibly hiking later this year. Yeah, and I think what's interesting about the last few months is we've seen volatility in European equities, not US equities. But of course, on the fixed income side, you've had a lot of volatility with bonds we've got this in, in Europe our, in and our a lot second of volatility. Chart lot more volatility when it comes to US bonds. So what we've done here, we've um, looked at the volatility indicator for US bonds, that's the red line, and um, the VIX index again for the sort of US uh, share. So volatility. you can see that you know, what we were saying about the contrast between the US and Europe has really been most true on the equity side. And you have seen a pickup in bond fixed income volatility as we've had these uh, constant reassessments of when the Federal Reserve might move to a first rate rise. And there is a general expectation now that we'll have the first rate rise towards the latter part of this year. Which is obviously affecting the bond market. But um, another important point is that just because markets are not volatile doesn't mean that they're not worried or that there could be a sudden move at some point. No, I mean, this is the kind of thing you'd expect to see. And in fact, you see back in 2013, you had also the same thing of a bond volatility, but not equities, because there was a lot of expectation then around tapering and a rate rise by the US. But we shouldn't think volatility in itself is a bad thing. We'd expect to have volatility volatility on the fixed income side at this very important moment, this turn in the rate cycle, equities, you would think, would look through this a little bit and say, you know what, the rates are going up because the economy is still getting better and maybe doesn't need that emergency support. OK, but also sometimes the, the quietest moment, the calm is, comes before the storm. So what happens? We have a crucial weekend of negotiations on Greece. If on Monday morning um, there's no deal, what do you think is going to happen to these sort of indicators in the US and Europe? <laughs> Well, I think I, I suspect what we'll see is more volatility in Europe, but possibly the same situation in the US, that people are much more focused on the rate situation and the economy, what the Federal Reserve might think about the US, and more focused on that than on Greece. There could be long-term consequences from a major uh, problem with Greece, with Greece leaving the Eurozone for the Eurozone as a whole, very long-term consequences. Short-term, though, we don't see it derailing the European recovery. And that's probably what you inv US investors should be most focused on. But you're quite right, volatility is not a bad thing. We shouldn't feel that uh, a bit of volatility is bad when actually we want to be looking more at the fundamentals and the fundamentals can be volatile. Stephanie, we're going to have to finish there. Thank you very much. So Europe braced certainly for, for more storms, but possibly the US more concerned about the Fed.